Hi, I'm Elizabeth Cho Tapuan. I'm a medical doctor in the Philippines and I was trained in internal medicine, rheumatology, and pain management. But foremost, I'm a Christian. I wanted to start this Trinity Care Health Concierge as a source of enlightenment for a lot of people. Why Trinity Cares? I want to impart that our God loves us and there's one God in three divine person, which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent to us after Je uh, Jesus ascended as source of enlightenment. We are always in stress. Little things, some, some, there are some people whose stress is minimal for others and some are too big for others. But the basic thing is, how do we cope? It's the coping management in every situation. It's important. You have to have some foundation to keep us going. not to lose hope. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Now, why concierge? Concierge is a point of reference in, in a hotel where you could ask questions, ask informations, ask um, directions, especially if you're new in town, it's a new city. So they basically help you get around, find solutions to your needs. So it's the same way God he loves us, we only have to talk to Him. I believe that He knows our, in our head, or He knows what we need even before we ask. And I have always um, believed that and I have experienced that through my life. And what I appreciate is I have built a habit of opening the Bible every day. Because a lot of times we don't know what's the right answers to our situation, what's the best solution. And I always ask, what would Jesus do if he is with me? So I always ask, I always pray. Even when I was, you know, when I was practicing, I remember when a patient comes in the door, I pray that I be guided. Like it's an example, there was a um, lady who was who, who saw me, and excuse me, is asking for a tranquilizer because he cannot sleep. So I ask, uh, 
why you can't sleep? Is there something that's troubling you? And he op she opened up that she's so worried about her daughter who's in the U.S. It's her only child and they're too far apart. So I told her because I have I said I didn't I'm not trying to intrude on your religion but I just want to ask do you pray for your for your child? And he says, "Yes, of course, I pray for her every day." I said, "If you pray for her, and you know God loves your daughter more than you do, probably, most likely, and God knows what's best for your daughter and for you, then why do you worry?" It means you pray, but you do not trust our God. You do not trust your God. Because it's not enough that you pray. You've got to internalize it. You've got to believe that you'll be directed. So I asked, I told the lady, I said, why don't you read the Bible if you cannot sleep? And for sure you won't be able to finish it in one night, then you'll fall asleep. And God will be guiding you while you're reading it. He will direct you to the verse that uh, will make you stronger. You make you peaceful. And so I didn't give her a tranquilizer. I think I just gave her a some antihistamine because you know antihistamine makes can make you drowsy. So probably about three months or six months after I saw her, I, I even forgot about her. She came knocking at the door. Oh, she came at the time where I was so busy with lots of patients waiting for me. And uh, she told she people on the on the door and he said, Who oh, talk? Do you remember me? You you advised to read the Bible? She said, It worked, it worked. He said, I now I'm also going to join my daughter. Because I told her, see, back then, I remember, I told her, you see, you keep on worrying, now you're getting sick, and then if you get sick, you get to get hospitalized now. I said, of course, your daughter will be worried about you, so she will end up coming home, leaving her husband or probably even her kid, or she might be bringing her kid. But what did you do? You disrupted their, their family life. I said, you should believe that God knows what's best for both of you, that he's taking care of your daughter. So I said, why don't you take care of yourself and then join them later? Then you could help. So that's what he told me, that it worked. And there's so much experiences in my life that I could relate. But first of all, what I want to impart to you is pray in the morning. I always pray, I cast out the the negativity, I cast out the demonic forces. I always pray in the name of Jesus. I bind all demonic forces, all negativity, all forces of bad things, 
all illness and sickness, mountains, obstacles, curse, family division, strife, depression, pain that have come against and I mentioned my family and those people I want to pray for. Cover us with your precious blood that was shed for us on the cross. Mary, our mother, will seek your protection and intercession with the sacred heart of Jesus for us and our family. Surround us with your mantle of love to scourge the enemy. Saint Michael, our guardian angel, come defend us and our family against the evil ones that roam the earth. In the name of Jesus, take authority by an all powers and force of evil. Depart from our homeland and this world. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I invoke the Holy Spirit to give me His holy gifts, to enlighten me, to strengthen me. And a lot of times when I open the Bible, it basically tells me what to do or give me an insight, an example. When my husband got sick in Reno, Nevada, there's this choice to let go or not to. But that time, I've always opened on verses of healing. I don't know where exact verses the verses in the Bible are, I mean, where they are, I just open it and, you know, and that time it was always in the parable of healing. And then when I doubt myself, say, probably it's just a coincidence. And then the following morning when I opened the Bible, I get castigated. I'm told, you of little faith, you have faith of a mustard seed, you wait on the Lord, why are you afraid that I'm with you? And there's so much, so many things. There was even one time when he was being transported from Las, from Reno to Las Vegas. I was insisting if you could fly us to Las Vegas, why cannot you not fly us to San Antonio, Texas? And I was, you know, trying to pull strings or trying to prepare stuff here in San Antonio, calling the facility and things like that. But then those times I opened the Bible on that part about Cornelius and Peter, where Peter was put in trance three times and Jesus was telling him to eat the unclean animal. And so Peter keep on resisting. And uh, so on the third night he asked, Lord, why do you always insist on me, on letting me eat this the unclean animal? And then Jesus said, "There will be two servants who's gonna pick you up. Don't ask question, just go." And those servants were servants of Cornelius, and Cornelius is a Gentile. So, um, so he just went. So in the same way, I was opening the Bible in the same passages, consecutive night, I mean consecutive morning. And I asked, what's the mess? What is this, Lord? 
and I got the same message. Don't ask questions, just go with the flow. So I have to go to Las Vegas. So I got a bit of scared because I don't have a place to stay there. I don't have money. I don't have. Uh, uh, I don't have job there. How will how will I maintain myself? I don't want to leave my husband there. So, and lo and behold, my best friend in when I was working at Clark Air Force Base as a civilian primary care physician, my best friend there was a couple who treated me like their daughter, has a house in Las Vegas and through Facebook she told me that I could stay in her house just that I have to have my own car and my brother was able to send me my car. And so, so many things have been happening that sometimes you don't understand. And when I went to Las Vegas, it was God's plan for us to meet Tegan and reconnect with my friends, uh, Tom and Norma. And you could see really it was a providential, it's an act of God that I got there and now we're back in San Antonio it was still you know things happen that beyond my comprehension so my message is keep your faith strong Every morning, ask God to show you the way. Because we don't really know the way. You know, we might know how to go about our business. But the main question is, what does, what does Jesus wants us to do? Where does he want us to go? And... How are we going to to find solution? And he will lead you, I tell you. It it's I'm so grateful knowing God because although I was I'm a doctor and you know I was helpless helping my husband. I can only rely on God and His providence. And I say, Lord, I am nothing without you. But with you, I can do anything. So I'll end this first part of my video and hope you have gotten something out of it next time we'll talk about stress how it how we manage the stress in our life Bye-bye for now. Good night. God bless.